What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be making this majestic beast here. The Magic Vanity Mirror Finish 2. No, not really. What we're going to be looking at today is how to export your wonderful, wonderful program from Max and turn it into a standalone application. And that's exactly what this is. You can see here that if I right click it, I can show packet contents and it opens up just like any application. I can drag this into my application folder and it would run just like any native Mac application. We've even got this rad icon. When we open it, we get, it looks just like Mac, Macs in presentation mode, but we don't have any of our borders or windows. There's no Macs console and we can interact with it. We can use it. So just as you would expect, it loads up and it gets going. Wow. That is my favorite mirror ever. So, what does this actually look like under the surface? So if we quit that, and then open Max, what do we have? When it, you can see when I open Max, it's almost the, the Max version of the, the standalone application because that's exactly what it does. It creates an exact replica of whatever you've got. So if I take it out of presentation mode and unlock it, you can see that I've got all the objects I'd need to, to make a standard uh, standard patch. I've got some little extras over here, like this uh, this load message forces the presentation to start in, uh, the patcher to start in presentation mode, which just means it's a bit neater. Uh, and I made sure that my presentation mode had all the comments and buttons that I need to use my application properly. I'm not going to go into detail about that because that's not what this tutorial is for. So let's imagine you're at the same stage I am. You've got the finished product and you want to create it. It's a fairly straightforward process, but all you need to do is go to file, build a collective or an application. And this will give you this fancy little window here. And it's a script that says, open this patcher. And that's it. When we double click our application or when we execute our application, it will open this patcher that we see here. And now obviously it'll run all the load messages and load bangs that we've set up just as if we were loading from a, a save file. We can also add extras to this. So the little extra I did was app icon and I included the file. I included my test.icns, which is uh, an Apple icon file. And as simple as that, we've created our, our patcher We've added our app icon and we push build. And it's gonna open up this new version here. Now I'm gonna save it to my desktop and I'm gonna give it a name. Now importantly, you don't want to build a Max Collective because Max Collective still needs either Max or the Max runtime to be able to use it. So if you want to share your dope man vanity mirror with your friends, you're gonna to need to build an application. And then we push save. We'll get the Mac spinning ball of death. And that's it. That's it done. On our desktop, we'll be left with our magic mirror. And you'll see here that it's not got an icon yet. But if I push space to get more information, my beautiful icon is existing. The This won't rectify itself until you log out and log back in. It's just an, an issue with uh, with Apple, basically. So if you log out and log back in, you will be left with... I can get it out of the way this. How good is that? And that's it. So you could email that to all your friends and they'd all be able to use it with or without Max MSP installed. But what you'll notice is that this is a 347 megabyte file. When really there's not that much here. We're not actually saving anything. And that's because if we look at the standalone object, you can see that it's not being configured fully yet. But if we search this out, you can see we get things like here. So we can include or exclude things happening when we, we release a standalone version. So you can tell it to have all your windows active or not when it launches. So if you're using things like a generator or you want to save on resources, you can control which windows are active and not using this patcher uh, information. Prevent closing top-level patcher. 
Now this is quite a fun one to play with because what that means if we open it is people can't actually close your application. Uh, you can put that in, obviously you give it a one or a zero and it will let you control it. But what you'll see here is things like gen support which can uh, allows access to all the jet dot uh, gen MOP objects they take up a massive amount of resources which you just don't need to include if you're not using them so you can have things like gen support and then remove it and that is going to save you some space and then there's all these other uh, search for missing files this is very good if you're unsure where all the files are so say you're giving it to someone to install and they do it wrong have this enabled and it'll let you search for it but down here, it's really good uh, if you're testing to see if your standalone includes everything you need when you're sending it out. So if you've not collated your project properly, this can be really good uh, to find out. And that was just a really quick tutorial uh, how to create a standalone application for your beautiful Max patches.